Hi, this is Erin and Linda with Traveling Flamingo. We just got back from another princess cruise. This will be our third princess cruise in total. And we wanted to give you some tips and tricks that we've learned over the last couple of cruises on what you can expect from princess and some of the really cool things that princess offers that others don't. And maybe some things you should know ahead of time before you book around whether or not princess is for you. So these are our top 15 tips. If you guys want to hear any more of our other traveling tips, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Our first couple of tips have to do with dress code. On embarkation and disembarkation days, there are no dress codes for the dining room. This is to allow people who have not received their suitcases yet or already packed to be able to go down in, to dinner in what they chose to wear to get on the ship. Our second tip is that jeans are permitted in the main dining rooms on the princess ships, provided that they are not fraying or ripped. Shorts, however, are not allowed, nor is there any beach or pool attire. So I would recommend just reviewing your ship's guide when you get on for what the dress codes are. Our third tip is that if you want a bathrobe, you can request it via the princess online. We found it was helpful to have it on some of the days where we wanted to go down to the hot tub later in the evening. It was a bit cool that we didn't have to worry about getting any of our clothes wet. We'll just use their robes. Our fourth tip is that you can see all the activities that are happening that day using Princess at Sea. You can access it through your smartphone by connecting to the ship's Wi-Fi. You can also see your account statements at the same time as messaging other passengers. We found this to be really helpful. We didn't have to carry the princess powder with us when we finished lunch. We could see what the next activity was, if we wanted to attend it or not. We also met a few other people on the ship and we're meeting up for things with them that they could message us on the, the princess at sea and we could say, okay, well, we'll meet you at this activity or we'll meet you for dinner at this time. So we did find that we use princess at sea quite often. Our fifth tip has to do with laundry services. Uh, we've used it uh, two of our three cruises. One of them it was a longer cruise and the last one because we were going on somewhere else that we wanted to make sure we had all of our laundry clean. So there are two ways to have your laundry done. One is through the onboard laundry service which works similar to any hotel and the other is that they do have washing machines on board. Um, keep in mind that they do usually get busy as you go later on in the as the, you get closer to the end of the cruise. Um, there is usually one per floor, and they do sell detergent there. Our detergent at home, we have a high efficiency washing machine, so our typical laundry detergent doesn't work. Um, our cruise, two cruises ago, we brought our own, it did not work, so the last cruise, we didn't even bother bringing our own, we just bought it on the ship. Our sixth tip is to bring a water bottle. Um, we're both very active and we like to stay healthy and stay hydrated and the environmentalists in us, the amount of bottles of water, the plastic that we would have had to use, it's just, it's really hard to gauge how many to buy and then what do you do if there are extras and then you're wasting all these bottles. So we each brought our own refillable water bottle and would go to Horizon Court and you can fill it up there. Just keep in mind, you don't put the water right into your water bottle. For sanitary purposes, you fill it in a cup and then just pour it into your water bottle. But that saved us a ton of money and we then were able to carry that around with us, take it with us on our excursions. Our seventh tip is that they do, that Princess offers free coffee, water, unsweetened iced tea, and some ships also have lemonade and hot chocolate. So there are beverages available other than just water, so it's up to you, you can look to see if it's worth purchasing more. Our eighth tip has to do with gratuity. It is included for most of the services on your cruise and it's already included in your cost. However, there are two areas where the gratuity is not included. The first is for the casino dealers and the second is for the youth staff. So if you're using the casino or the youth staff, you may want to tip separately. You can also add additional gratuity for anyone who's doing a really great job. Um, and also, if you don't feel like it, you can reduce your tip as well if you go down to the main concierge desk. Uh, the other thing that a tip does not include is anything that you do off the ship. So your excursions, the, we would take some of the money, some money with us so we could tip the tour guides. Usually, they do depend on those tips for a lot of their pay as well. So if you feel that whoever you've done your excursion with or if you've done a tour, it's done an exceptional job, you may want to be tipping them as well. Our ninth tip is that you can 
constantly be searching and taking your time when it comes to booking because there are always discounts. We have not paid full price for a cruise yet and we've always been able to get the rooms that we want in terms of a balcony. And you can also sign up at princess.com and they will send you alerts when there are discounts. So we found that really helpful when we knew, uh, for example, our last cruise we wanted to go on was Alaska, that we were able to get alerts when there was um, discounts for the Alaskan cruise. Our 10th tip is in regards to dining. There are two options, traditional dining and anytime dining. Traditional dining works really well if you know what time you want to be back um, and you know what time most of your excursions are going to end, you want to have a dinner at a set time. Uh, we, we do, when we did our first cruise that worked really well for us, we went with our family so we knew there was a dinner at 6 o'clock every day and everybody could meet up and talk about their dinners. Um, the, it is nice to have a little bit more flexibility. Our last two cruises we have done the anytime dining and just whenever we get up first thing in the morning we would know what time we were planning on having a dinner at or what time our excursions are done so we could call and book a, a reservation for that time. So we do highly recommend calling for a reservation because there can be lineups for the anytime dining. The menus are the exact same and many times the dining room is an exact clone of each other so you're not going to be missing out on special seats or an atmosphere in the dining room or, or any of the food that's offered in one or the other, it's all the exact same. Our 11th tip also has to do with dining and it is the specialty dining. So we don't really feel that it's necessary. The meals in the main dining room are very good, we enjoy them. Oftentimes the, the specialty dining, it is a unique experience so we have tried the Italian restaurant, the steakhouse and the bayou, cap, the bayou on the um, Island Princess as well. And we've enjoyed all of our experiences, but there is an additional cost. So you may want to decide with you and your whoever you're traveling with, is that something you want to pay for or not? But you can definitely have really nice dining experiences in the main dining room. Our 12th tip is that Princess always has experts on the ship who have cruised the itinerary many times before. They are all for sessions throughout the day and throughout the trip that will talk about different ports, histories of different cities. There was a naturalist on our Alaskan cruise who shared a lot of information and personal experience and stories with us. We highly recommend attending these, um, attending them and seeing what they have to offer and the information that they have to share with you. And Oftentimes they're recorded and shown on your TV later on throughout the ship or throughout the day as well. So if you missed one and you wanted to see it, you could usually check it out on the TV. Our 13th tip is to participate. There's a daily contest on the Awake Show where you can enter to win prizes and you can sign up for dance competitions. There's live games to be playing. There's stuff, no matter what your interest is, if it's sports or arts, they had an egg drop challenge on our last cruise. So it's a great way to go out, meet other people, get some prizes and have a lot of fun as well. All right, almost at the end, two more. Our 14th tip is that we find there are not enough outlets for us in the rooms between our smartwatches, smartphones, tablets. We often travel with a 10 port USB hub that allows us to charge all of our extra gadgets and everything else that we want without having to leave something in the bathroom. So uh, I would look into getting one of those. Uh, we can, we'll post a link of the one that we have. We've had it for a couple years now. It's worked really well for us. Our last tip is that Princess generally focuses on quality in general. It has a lot of different luxuries, the ports, it stops at, and activities. It focuses on quality over what I would say some of the other gimmicky things like flow rider, bumper cars, skating rinks. For me, those are things that you might do once over your trip, but going and having a real experience at a port and getting to know the locals is something that I, I'm really more interested in. So if you're looking for more of a luxury and the experiences of the ports that you're going to and the excursions, then I would highly recommend booking with Princess. So please let us know what you think of our tips in the comments below and if you have any extras that we should be adding in. We are a relatively new channel, so we'd love it if you hit that like and subscribe button to hear some more of our traveling tips and comments that will be coming out. And thanks very much for listening.